seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. You are my strength. Strength like no from the spirit this morning Declare! 
declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, let the verdict be overturned. Let disadvantages be overturned. Negativities be turned around. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Bible said be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. in this place in the name of Jesus we ask oh God that the impact of your word will be experienced in our lives and the believer said amen put your hands together one more time amen it's good to be in church this morning hallelujah church can we put our hands together let's celebrate our father Celebrate our father. Celebrate our father. Put your hands together. He needs no introduction in this house. Put your hands together for the man of God. Whilst you are at it, I want you to celebrate the life of our mother. Mommy Fire, a wonderful woman of God. Celebrate the woman of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to acknowledge the all-star pastorate of Overflow Worship Center. Put your hands together. It's an all-star pastorate. I told him I'll get him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Celebrate the servants of God in the house. Amen. When we grow up, we'll be like you. Amen. I want to grow up to be like all of you put together. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, we thank God for the privilege to speak his word in the church this morning. <laughs> you see what it is? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. This morning, I came to speak a short message. I'm going to be speaking by the grace of God for about 15 minutes and I'll be out of your way. Say 15 minutes. Amen. If you know anything about me, you would know that of all the pastors, I'm the most well behaved. Don't do that. We are alive. We are alive. Don't do that. Oh, I'm living in a, somebody's paradise. I thought I was the most. Also, will you agree with me now? Yeah? As for me and you, dear. It's all right. Once I have one person agreeing, it's okay. Salom's wife agrees with me. Blagoji, be quiet in the service. Hallelujah. So when I say 15 minutes, it's 15 minutes. Amen. Oh yeah, 15 minutes. Thank you, sir. So I can start work. Somebody say start work. Start work. <laughs> but this morning, I want to talk about the church. Say the church. The reason why I want to talk about the church is because at 8 p.m. last night, I was in a conversation with my brothers. And they will not agree to anything I will say. So you see, when I tell you I'm the most well behaved, please understand. These three wonderful brothers would object to anything I say. So they put me on a wake up duty between 8 a.m. 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. How can you do that? Bad boys. Hmm. 
That tell you I will get you. Hallelujah. They beg. They have not seen anything yet. <laughs> Let's behave ourselves. Bishop is watching. <laughs> but I want to talk about the church. The reason is because as I scan through society and our time, you would notice that one of the most attacked group of people, one of the most criticized group of people, one of the most targeted group of people is the church. Say the church. So I ask myself, what have we done? What have we done? Because as I look around, I realize that the church is the bride of Christ. Have you ever been in a wedding ceremony where you hear a whisper from behind? Ah, na groom no ni Oh yeah, I've been in such a meet a, a, a wedding set. Ah, now such a fine guy. You see, and it looks as if I can just tap us that with the body of Christ. Why? Because the church is the bride of Christ. And the world looks at us and it is as if we don't deserve it. The world look at us, we are a bunch of thieves, a bunch of liars, a bunch of adulterers, a bunch of fornicators. Like Pastor Dela was saying, it is not as if we qualify. It is not as if we scored everything in the marking scheme. But somewhere, somehow, the love of God still persists. The Bible said the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases and his mercies are new every morning. The church cannot be figured out. Criticize the church for our offerings. Why is the church taking offering after offering after offering? Criticize the church about our tithe. Last time I saw on Facebook, a, a, a snapshot was leaked about the church, of, the church of Pentecost. And it is going all over the place. People are talking. Why must the church will such wealth? But it is okay if MTN is, 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 is reading millions of Ghana cities at the end of the month. It's okay. It is okay if your firm is doing so well. But it is not okay that the church is doing well. Say the devil is a liar. Yeah. We, they criticize the church to the extent that sometimes our pastors are criticized. Why is the pastor riding in a V8? Why is the pastor clothed in Louis Vuitton? Why is the pastor... Last time I drove somewhere and I saw a prominent man of God and I saw his house and I said there is hope for the future. Only my brothers understand. The world does not understand. In fact, the world does not agree if the pastor should take a 10-day working leave. And say, let me carry my wife and children. Let's go to Bahamas. The church, the world, in fact, and it has become so bad that sometimes we find our own selves criticizing the church. Don't understand. Don't understand why the pastor's haircut is the way it is. Don't understand why the pastor is wearing the kind of watch he's wearing. Don't understand why the pastor is driving the kind of car he's driving. Last time I saw a picture of a man hugging a little boy, but behind that hug were many arrows. The world does not understand. But I'm saying that one of the main reasons why the church is subjected to all kinds of attacks is because the church is the bride of Christ. Because everybody is seeking to marry that guy. All the sisters are doing the best they can. It reminds me about this, the context in the book of Esther. The Bible said the women were aligned. Everybody was they were all seeking the attention of the king. But here comes a poor, innocent, young woman by the name Esther. Who would even want to do much to impress the king? And if you look at our lives, we are not doing much to impress the Lord. We look at our lives, it's like we've not done enough to qualify or to deserve his law. But somewhere, somehow, somewhere, somehow, the
spotlight falls on Esther. When you are a bride, you draw attention. Praise the Lord. When you are the bride, because you are adorned, listen, in a certain glory and a certain beauty, when you walk in, whether they like it or not, everybody will rise up to receive the coming in of the bride. <laughs> Say the bride. the bride. This morning I came to encourage you because sometimes we can find ourselves in a situation where the world can so talk us down until we believe it ourselves. The Bible said the other day, help me Lord, that there were 12 men sent to spy the land. 10 returned and said, God, look, we are like grasshoppers in our own eyes. The bride is the spectacle of the occasion. The bride is adorned in beauty. And child of God, can I, can I tell you something? The church is not this auditorium. The church is not our ultra modern building we are about to build. The church is not where we last went for the wedding. You are the church. And so the world is so talking you down. But it is only because you are adorned in a certain beauty. You are adorned in a certain glory. You are adorned with a certain power. The Bible says what manner of love is this? That the Father has bestowed upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. Say what manner of love? What the world does not see is the scars of the church. The world does not see how that the church is hopping from place to place with no permanent place of worship. The world don't see that one. The world does not see it when the pastor has to dip money, hands into his own pocket and send our children to school. Humanitarian services. I follow Reverend Steve Mesa a lot. Crazy things for the Lord. The world does not see our scars. And many a time people don't see what you go through. People don't see it when you are crying in the middle of the night. People don't see it. People don't see it when nothing seems to be working. Say the scars of the church. The world does not understand. Listen, can I tell the world something? Let me tell the world something. That if you care to know, it is because of the church the nation is secured. If you care to know, it is because of the church your family is intact. If you care to know, it is because of the church this land is not destroyed. How do I know? Give me the book of Genesis chapter 18 verse 23. To 26. I don't have a title for my message. Put one on it yourself. Genesis chapter 18. My brother, let's flow. Genesis chapter 18, verse 23 to 26. And Abraham came near and said, Would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? This is a discourse between Abraham and God. God comes to town one day. And says that I want to destroy the people. Because their sin has, has so much arisen to me. And this is the interaction. Read on my brother. Suppose there were 50 righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous that were in it? Read it. Next verse. Far be it from you to do such a thing as this. To slay the righteous with the wicked. You see, God has no intention to slay the righteous with the wicked. God has no intention to cause you to perish with the unbelievers. That is why I said that Samson's death was an error. That is not the intention of God. Please read on. So that the righteous should be as the wicked, far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Next verse. So the Lord said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. For their sakes. Somebody say for their sakes. Come on, say for their sakes. 
I need the world to understand. It is because of people like you and I. We may not be perfect in our appearance. We may not get it all correct when we come out. We may not speak the best of English grammar. We may not have the best of salaries in our pocket. But if the world cares to know, it is because of the church the nation is not destroyed. If your family cares to know, it is because of you that family is intact. If the world cares to know, it is because of the church. Say the church. The church is an intercessor. The church is an instrument of mercy. I came to talk to the world. Praise the Lord. It is because of the church. You see, what I'm seeking to do by the grace of God is so that when you step out there, it doesn't matter what men will say about you. The other day, the man of God said, whose report will you believe? It doesn't matter what they throw at you. Sometimes you can be in a firm. You can do the best you know how to do. And it's as if your best is not enough. It is as if you are unable to please your boss. But I need you to understand that because of you, come on, say because of me. You are not here yet. Say because of me. It is because of you things are working the way they are working. There is no hero without a scar. As I am speaking to you this morning, I want you to reflect on your scars. Because your scars, they qualify you for what the Lord is about to do. Because when the Lord picks you, turns you around, do you look like Jesus? Because when you pick Jesus, you turn his back and there are some scars to show. You look into his power and there are some scars to show. You look all around him and there are scars. Is there a believer with a scar in this place? But at the end of the day, the Bible said, Wherefore God has so highly exalted him that at the mention of his name, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that he is the Lord. I declare over your life, if you have a scar, you are next in line for an elevation in the name of Jesus. If you have a scar, don't look down on yourself. God is about to show up. Do you have a scar? Do you have a scar? You see, sometimes we look at ourselves and it is as if that when we check our lives, to we ourselves, we are not doing well enough. But listen, can I talk to you? You look all through scripture. All our fathers in the faith had one fault or another. You look at Abraham and there was a scar. You look at Jacob, there was a scar. You look at David, there was a scar. You see Moses and there is something to show. You look at your life and there is a scar. So before the well, would we'll continue to zero in on our glory and our harvest. We want to take a moment and tell the world, you have no idea what I've been through. You have no idea the scars I carry. <laughs> Last night, when we left speaking, in fact, before you guys called me to mess me up, <laughs> I was enjoying a movie with my wife. Yeah, pastors watch movies. The title was The Great Wall. Chinese film. Chinese film. Say Chinese film. I said, watch that one. And the hero of the war was so much injured that somebody picked him up. Put him down to, to nurse his wounds. And she thought that was it all. When the guy came to him, himself and rose up to wear his dress, she was amazed at the kind of scars behind the guy. But he got to the scene and they said, what a warrior. The scene and said, what a guy. In fact, please read for me the text in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse number 8. Quickly, let's do that one. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from the verse 7. Yes, sir. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Read it, my brother. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are hard pressed on every side, yet we are not crushed. 
We are perplexed but not in despair. We are perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted but not <laughs> forsaken. We are persecuted but we are not forsaken. Struck down but not destroyed. You are struck down but this morning you are not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body but the dying Marcosa. of the Lord Jesus. You are always carrying in your body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Always carrying in your body how that you go to bed on an empty stomach. Always carrying on your body how that you have suffered one referral to the other and to the other. Always carrying in your body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Always carrying in our body as a church the marks of our Savior Jesus Christ. Read on my brother. That the life of Jesus also that may be manifested in our body. That the life of Jesus might be manifested in our bodies. We carry the scars so that the life of Christ would be manifested in our bodies. We carry the scars so that we shall rise up in glory. I came to declare to somebody under the sound of a voice, uh, you are about to manifest uh, a certain wonder. Uh, you are about to manifest uh, the glory of the Lord uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, the Bible says, uh, Christ in you, uh, the hope of glory, carrying about the scars. That we may manifest Christ in our bodies. Read on. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested. Child of God, this morning flesh. I need you to understand that the life of Christ is about to be manifested in your life. It is okay if I have two people responding in this place. But I came to inject some hope into your life. That the life of Christ will be made manifest in your life. At the end of the day I see you standing tall. At the end of the day I see you standing above all. That the life of Christ will be made manifest. Next verse. So then, death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit Hallelujah. of faith. Death is a mystery. Death is working in us, but in exchange, you are receiving life. Death is working in us. But there is a transaction taking place. Whenever you come to the altar, you drop money, but something is released onto your life. Death is coming to us, but you are receiving life. I came to declare over somebody in this meeting, receive the life of God. Maybe your finances are suffering. Let that finances receive life. Academically, you might be suffering. Let there be an exchange on this altar. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Receive life. Shout, I receive life. I receive life. Sit down for two seconds. Listen, let me talk to you. This morning, I didn't come to preach to the strong. I didn't come to preach to the mighty. Neither did I come to speak to the superhero. You are okay the way you are. But I came to talk to, talk to somebody who is weak. It has been eight long years of holding on to a word that we said that it is a year of the great harvest. Eight long months of waiting on the Lord. But I came to talk to somebody who cannot see the shadow of the word that was spoken in the beginning of the, of the year 2022. You are tired. You have waited. You are tired. You have tarried. You are tired. You have long and waited and waited. But it's as if nothing is working. I came to talk to such a one. I came to, the, to talk to the one who is hurt. Suffered heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak. When the brothers come, they mess you up and they hurt you down and they leave you alone and you are being hurt all over the place. I came to talk to such a one. You have waited for that marriage but it's as if it is not coming. Came to talk to the discouraged. I came to talk to the confused. Because sometimes in our journey with God, you can be confused. I didn't say it, Pastor Della said it. So I'll say, who can swan over Yeah, the, the, the laughter is very small because if you know. It's coded. Uh, yeah. I came to talk to somebody like that. Frail, weak, tired. On the verge of giving up. 
on the verge of leaving that marriage on the verge of throwing in a towel said enough is enough but I want to tell you something please read for me the book of Job chapter number 7 the verse number seven, chapter number 14 the verse 7 to 9 quickly read it the book of Job chapter 14 verse 7 to 9 for there is hope for a tree if it is cut down that it will sprout again and that its tender shoots will not cease though its roots may grow old in the earth in the name of Jesus and its stump may die in the ground listen child of God pause there my brother the Bible said there is hope for a tree said there is hope for me you, it might look as if the world is against you. You are between the hard place and the rock. <laughs> but the Bible said, I didn't say it. The Bible said that there is hope for a tree. Go back to verse 7. There is hope for a tree. And if you know anything about the word of God, whenever you see tree, it represents man. <laughs> there is hope for a man. Kadema Sotoza. There is hope for Ernest. There is hope for Alpha. Adema there is hope for Delali. There is hope for Gideon. If it is cut down, it shall sprout again. I upon the satire. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, and its tender shoots it will not cease. I declare by your life. Doesn't matter what you are going through, there is hope for you. I want you to understand there is hope for you. It's not over until God says so. I said there is hope for you. And this is why I speak over the church. The world may be criticizing. There is a politician. I'm waiting for him to find myself in a ring. We will fight. Because that guy has made it his business to attack the church. You better repent. Else one of these days always talking about the church. Don't understand why the church is praying on Monday. He says -ba 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 -ba. he doesn't understand. You know the guy. I didn't say anything. You see, what you need to understand, my dear, the world can't get you. You are a mystery. You are a sign and a wonder. You don't look like what you have been through. You don't look like what has been thrown at you. You don't look like the you have suffered. You don't look like the tears that roll down your eyes. You are a sign and a wonder. Next verse. Yet at the scent of water, Cold it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. Now I want you to go back to the verse that said its roots may die. I want to talk there for a moment. Quick, quick, verse quick. eight. Though its roots may grow old. Now listen, if you know anything about things growing old, it only means that the thing has gone to a state where its strength is little. It is not as strong or vibrant as it used to go, it used to be. Now, if you also know anything about root, root is a is a, is a place of stamina. It's a place of, of, of holding you together. The root can be likened to the anchor that the storm may blow all around you, but there is a root down the ground that keeps you steadfast, that keeps you sure, that preserves you. But this is the church whose roots are growing old. You are the believer. You are losing faith. A believer who is about to give up, your root is growing old. But this morning there is a word for you. I said there is a word for you. The Bible says his stamp may die in the ground. Kolakatas. Looks as if something is dead in your life. Looks like you are in the state of the Ichabod where we said the glory has departed. The Bible talks about a man called Samson. Somebody say Samson. Come on, let the believer say something. The Bible said one day, an anointing left something. I wish I could talk about the anointing. Let me tell you something about the anointing. The anointing is precious. The anointing is It's priceless. Preserve that anointing. The responsibility is yours. The thing about the anointing, let me talk to you. When the anointing comes on you, you don't feel it. You see the results. The same way when the anointing leaves you, you don't feel, you don't feel it. Because Samson said, I will go out like the other times and shake myself. But the guy didn't know that God had left him. And this is why I charge the church. Don't compromise.
compromise. This is why I charge the church. Don't give up yet. This is why I charge the church. Don't throw in the towel. You can lose the anointing. I hope I'm preaching. Let's finish the Job scripture. Easter may die in the ground. Next verse. Yet at the scent of water. Yet at the scent of water. It will burn. It will burn. And bring forth branches like a plant. And bring forth branches like a plant. My Bible didn't say at the scent of water. Maybe it shall burn. At the scent of water. It may burn. At the scent of water. If you are lucky. It will burn. The Bible said. If you come into contact with the water of the word. If you come into contact with the word of God. You are in this service listening to me this morning. This is the scent of the water. Let there be a certain contact with the water to your root. The Bible said that the scent of water, it will bad. Your roots may be weak. Your roots may be withering. Your leaves may be coming down. You may look as if you are giving up. But the Bible said that the scent of water, it will bad. Bad, and it will bring forth branches like a plant. It's not over for you yet. You are about to bad. I said you are about to bad. I said you are about to bad. It will bad. It will bad. It will bad. It will bad. Help me. Oh, Somebody help me quickly. Rise up on your feet and let's worship the Lord. Lift up your hands in this place. At the scent of water. 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 Don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But at the scent of water. Can I have five people in this place with a hands lifted up? Scent of water, at the scent of water, at the scent of water, at the scent of water, come into contact with the water of his word. Lift up your voice, lift up your hands, worship the Lord in this place. Come on. Oh, you can see it's a miss. 
misery. But that story is about to turn. That story is about to turn. It is about to turn. of Luke chapter 5. Yes, keep playing it on the background. Keep playing it. Luke chapter 5, the verse number 4 and 5. Luke chapter number 5. God is in this place. The Lord is about to silence the world because of you. Hallelujah. Something happened in the book of Luke chapter number 5. Let's look at it. Keep standing. Luke chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. When he had stopped speaking. When Jesus had stopped speaking, something happened. Let's look at it. He said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Hold on one more time. Bible said, Jesus said to Simon, launch down into the deep and let down your net. Launch down. Launch down. You have done all you know how to do. It's like you're about to stop doing those things you knew how to do. But Jesus comes to Simon and says to Simon, launch down into the deep. Let down your net one more time. Who am I talking to this morning? I came to encourage you in this place. Launch one more time. Next verse. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Simon answered to Jesus. He said, Master, if you care to know what you are asking me to do, I have done it as long as I can remember. I have done all that I know how to do. If you care to know, Master, I am a fisherman by calling. Done all I know how to do. Been in charge for 12 days of recharge. Was here when we crossed over. You heard the word of the Lord said it is your year of the great harvest. Master, Master, we have toiled all night. Hey. Hear somebody crying to the Lord. What else can I do? What else can I do? What else you have toiled all night? But he didn't stop there. He said, We have toiled all night and I've caught nothing. But nevertheless, he said, nevertheless, nevertheless, can somebody find a little faith and nevertheless faith and go one more time? We are about to end the year very soon, but may you enter the nevertheless experience in the name of Jesus. Next verse. Nevertheless, at your word, yes, I will let down the nets. That's right. Next and, verse. And when they have done this, and when they have done this, they caught a great they number caught of a fish, great number of fishes, and their net was breaking. And their nets were breaking forth. What's what they lost? Katana kaprakatas, repepe batususu kataya. I push somebody by a faith of the Lord. Do it one more time. Your harvest is in the horizon. In the name of the Lord Jesus, He said, and when they did this, they caught a great number of fishes and their nets began to break. I pray for somebody in this place. Your net is about to break. Yes, Lord. Your net is about to break. Yes, Lord. Your net is about to break. Yes, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. I declare by your life, listen, Jesus. you may not qualify. You may not deserve it. But that struggle is about to be a thing of the past. Your net is about to break. And I hear in my ears, it said that the glory of the latter house 
shall be greater than the former. And so do I declare over our lives as we climb to the end of the year. May you enter the latter glory in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Now Samson went to Gaza and saw a harlot there and went into her. Samson saw a harlot. It means that Samson knew that she was a harlot but went into her. That is for another day. Next verse. When the Gazites were told Samson has come here, they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him 
all night at the gate of the city. They were quiet all night, saying, in the morning, when it is daylight, we will kill him. And that like, like, looks like that is the, the story of our lives. Lying in wait, waiting for an occasion to kill you. But I remember the Bible said that when the enemies are coming as a fly, that the Lord will lift up a standard between now to the end of the year. May the Lord lift up a standard. I said the Lord lift up a standard in your marriage, the standard of the Lord. Academically, the standard of the Lord. Financially, the standard of the Lord. Your holiness, the standard of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. That in the morning, when it is day, we will kill him. That in the morning, when it is day, we will break that marriage. The devil is a liar. Bible said, let God be true. That in the morning we will kill him. And this is why I pray for somebody here under my voice. That any agenda to ambush your life. Agenda to ambush the word of God. Agenda to ambush that word that you carry. That deep as good let there be an escape for you. I said, let there be an escape. Listen, that marriage that is working or something. Let there be an escape. The marriage is a spectacle. The world looks at it and says, What is this? What is this? Let me pick on you. That his wife is now an ASP. What is this? Were you not the one telling us that they were saying, Who are you? That story is about to change. And I declare over your life, in the name of the Lord Jesus, any agenda, listen, this guy, they were ambushing his destiny, but the devil is a liar. I command the door of escape. Yes, An escape for your sons and daughters. Yes, Lord. Academic escapes. Jesus. Financial escape. Yes, that your holiness. Let there be an escape. Yes, In the name of Jesus. Shout escape. Escape. Let's, let's end this thing. Go to verse 22. Judges 16 verse 22. However. However. The hair of his head. Hold on. Grow again. This is the situation. And the day where Samson realized that the anointing had left him. And now Samson had become an ordinary man. An object of entertainment. But the Bible said, however, I thank God for the bats. I thank God for the howevers. That the Bible said, however, the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shoving and this morning I came to prophetically declare that your hair is growing again your glory is growing again your finances is coming alive you are doing well academically however his hair began to grow again however his hair began to grow again if you can speak in the language of the Holy Ghost begin to prophesy my hair is growing again my hair is growing again my hair declare it declare it declare it Declare it. Declare it. My hair is growing again. My hair is growing again. In my spirit, my hair is growing. The hair of my health is growing again. In my prayer life, your hair is growing again. In your work study, your hair is growing again. In your finances, my hair is growing again. Professor, don't be quiet, open your mouth. My hair is growing again. Revelations 11 verse 15. My hair is growing again. My hair is growing again. My ministry hair is growing again. It is growing again. It's not over for me yet. Hallelujah. Say with me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As I connect. As I connect to the scent of water. To the scent of water. In this service. In this service. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. My hair. My hair is growing. Is growing. Once again. Once again. Once again. Once again. My academics. My, academics. my finances. My, finances. my marriage. My marriage. 
my destiny, my health. I declare my hair is growing again, again, again. I decree, I declare my children, they are hair, are growing again. Oh God, come on, say, Oh God, I declare, let my hair grow. Once again, once again, I declare between now to the end of the year, my hair, my hair, my hair, my hair, my hair is growing again, 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 again. As I bring my message to a close. The Bible said, and there was a man called Aaron. Everybody say Aaron. Yeah. That the Bible said, and God instructed them of all the tribes, bring a rod. Lay it in my presence. This morning, your rod is before the presence of God. The Bible said, and his rod was very dry. Momentarily, it looks like the rod was lifeless. Momentarily, it looks like that school, you will not finish it. Can I talk to somebody here? Any evil prophet Jesus. who has declared a word concerning your life, may they live to see their shame. Jesus name. Let them live long enough Jesus. to see their shame. Yes, Lord. They go about carrying a reputation that I am the prophet of God. Listen, may the Lord deliver us from the old prophet. Yes, Lord. I'm trying to control myself to, not to say some things, not, not to describe them in a certain way. But I'm saying that any evil prophet who is declaring a word over your life that it shall not be well with you, we declare let the words backfire. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Let the rod in my presence. As the rod contacted the presence, the Bible said all the rods remained the same, except for one man. His name is Aaron. The Bible said his rod began to burn. And this is why I command the burden of your rod. Jesus. As you are in this service, Lord. may your rod burn again. Amen. May your rod burn again. Amen. That marriage will burn again. Yes, Lord. Revelation 11, verse 15, and I close. The book of Revelation. 15 minutes. Read it. 11, verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded and there were loud voices in heaven. Saying, Listen, somebody. There is going to be a voice over your story very soon. There is going to be a sound of a voice in your story very soon. Read it, my brother. The kingdoms of this world the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms have become the kingdoms of our Lord and, of of Christ. Our Lord and, and Christ and he shall reign and he shall reign forever and hallelujah and, and ever I declare about your life that story is about to change whoever was in charge over your life this morning we fire them let the Lord rise up let the Lord take over let the story be turned let the situation be turned let God be glorified let God be true and every man a liar in the name of Jesus may the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ
between now to the end of the year, be strengthened. May you be like David. Said, by my God, I have run through the troop, scaled over the walls. Receive strength. Just before I hand over, I understand the senior high school, like final years are about to write their exam on Monday, tomorrow. Is that true? If you are here like that, come, I want to pray with you. It's because of your racist prayer. our brother and your prayer is one the father reward his faithfulness pray from your heart reward his faithfulness God rewards one thing and that is faithfulness well done thou good and faithful servant you are blessed my brother church is praying for just you. Just you. May your light shine. There is a cloud of witnesses standing here with you. And we declare that that which fights you from your background by the prayers of the saints, let them disappear. Church, lift your voice for 60 seconds and pray for our brother. Be crowned with a crown of glory. Mount up with wings. Be adorned with the garment of just Joseph. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we call it down. Be glorified in this place. And let a believer shout a believing amen.